Welcome to the November-ish vlog. My last vlog kind of ate into the first two weeks of November, so I thought that this would be a little bit shorter, but your girl has been very busy. Fun for you, more editing for me, but rewarding for the both of us. If you are new here, hi, I'm Radia Rahman. I'm 22 and I'm an illustrator from New York City. I'm Bengali American and you don't see a lot of us in this industry, which is exactly why I wanted to share my work on this corner of the internet. For those of you who are familiar with me, you might notice a change of scenery, which you'll see later throughout this vlog. Lots of fun stuff happened within the past two weeks, so fix yourself something to snack on or drink, or maybe you're watching this as you're doing a bit of work. Glad to keep you company. This may be a thick one. This will probably be a thick one. I guess I'll see you at the end of this video. Enjoy. I have checkmarked making stationery on my list. The next thing I wanted to do was to make some fabric. So I took this design from my sticker sheet and I turned it into a repeating pattern, which I will get printed on some fabric. This is how it's looking right now. And I think I'm going to take a hand at making some fabric face masks and cat toys. I'm super excited. Shout out to my former professor, Julia Rothman because she taught me how to do patterns and tiling. This one is a half drop pattern and if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have known how to go about making patterns. Today is Friday, November 13th. November 13th, I just finished a Zoom interview. Jeremiah from the Indie Bracket asked me a little bit about my work as an artist and just as a person. He asked a lot of great questions and I think the interview is being uploaded on their YouTube channel. So that's something you guys can check out as well. It's really nice that people are interested in the work that I do and are here to listen to what I have to say. And even with you guys watching this, just being able to listen and observe what I do as an artist. At 6.30, I'm entering a Zoom call with Fran on behalf of Cartoon Allies at SBA. So it's the school that I graduated from and she was going to physically appear at one of the Cartoon Allies meetings, but this was right before COVID, so it got canceled. So now we're having a Zoom session. Cartoon Allies was kind enough to invite me to that talk. Super excited. I have one of these silk screened shirts by her. It's gonna be cool to hear her live. Very excited. I'm a huge fan, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> the Cartoon Allies Zoom meeting with Fran starts in two minutes. Super excited and super nervous, but I'm wearing her dancing cat's shirt. So cute. Back in 2014, when I started working as an illustrator to make people feel like you're not going anywhere. You need to build this connection with people in order for them to support you. It's November 15th. It's a very chilly Sunday afternoon. I have one of Tiffany's vlogs going on in the back. I missed the premiere, which, which sucks. I usually try to make it in time for her Sunday premieres, 
but I just got interviewed by someone named Anchika who runs this podcast called Girl Jam so y'all can listen to that whenever it's uploaded it's very nice being able to talk about art things and life things my october vlog is going to premiere at 3 p.m today so i'm really excited to join the chat again because it's a really long one even longer than last time what else Ooh, i made a little mock-up of these cat ornaments and i'm actually going to make them uh, out of this blue felt I'm working on a lot of holiday stuff, designing things, making things. You'll see later throughout this vlog what fun things I have to offer for the holiday update. I'm doing a trade with this UK artist, Tink. She's super cute. She also has vlogs on YouTube. I love her art style and her aesthetic and just her positivity overall. I'm putting some prints and fun things from my store together for her and I'm very excited to send it out and I'm very excited to receive my trade as well. I got a lot of admin work done in the morning, sending out emails, checking on any lost orders. I feel a little less stressed, but I know that the stress is like right around the corner for the holiday shop update. I hope it'll be a good one and I hope that people enjoy the vlog for this premiere. Let me go find Kuni. I'm sorry, I interrupted your nap. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna put you back in your bed. I painted my nails, I'm watching Vicky's vlog, and I'm in it! I got some happy mail in today, and I'm just really happy to show you guys. I got a few things from Knives Meow, which is Radia, and on the back it says that they're very good friends, and I'm so happy that they are. Thank you so much, Radia. My October vlog is premiering in less than five minutes, so I'm gonna hop into the live chat and we'll see if we have any familiar faces popping up. We really out here in the live chat for the premiere. We just wrapped up the hour and 20 minute long premiere. So many people showed up, my friends showed up, Vicky showed up, Tiffany showed up, there were so many other people that showed up and the video already has over a thousand views just from the premiere and I am so grateful. It's just wild that people enjoy looking into this corner of my life, what I do as a person, what I do as an artist. Good vibes all around. I just heated this <laughs> vegan bow that I had from yesterday. Oh yeah, shout out to my friend Colin for letting me use his upload speed because it took two days to upload the last vlog but it took an hour to upload this one using Colin's internet. So shout out to Colin, shout out to you guys for supporting my work, and I'll catch you later. You sleep on mama? Sleep on mama. <laughs> no problem? <laughs> no problem. Good morning, it's Monday, November 16th. I am about to wrap up this art trade with Tink and head to the post office. I have a few errands to run today. Tink, if you're watching this vlog, skip over this bit. I'll leave a timestamp somewhere so you don't get spoilers. <laughs> Okay, so I included some extra goodies in this trade for her because why not? And I also added this little painting of her cat Betty because she is super cute and I love calico cats and they're super fun to draw. We've been planning the swap since last month, ever since I discovered her vlogs and reached out to her. So it's gonna be very exciting. It's been less than 24 hours since my October vlog was released. I got so many comments on it. I also reopened my shop for a week to take shirt pre-orders right before the holiday update. And I already have over a hundred orders, which is a good problem to have, but also like, I'm wearing this back brace because I've been having so many lower back problems. I'm 22, but it feels like I'm 92. I'm a small person and I keep forgetting that I have limits in terms of weightlifting. Definitely need to make sure that I'm not over exhausting myself. I'm also picking up an order from my favorite stationery store in the city, Yoseika Stationery. They recently just opened up a new space. What else? I got a new desk. That means I have to say goodbye 
to the current one I have, which is going to be a little rough because I've had this desk for nearly 10 years, but as you know, it's on its last legs, like it's literally buckling down the middle because I sit on it. That's going to be something I need to get to this week, especially as my room has been cleared because it's not a packing day. I also went to Ikea and got some drawers because the one that I am assembling doesn't have drawers underneath it, but you will see. It's a very cool desk and I hope that I can still sit on it because that's just a habit that I have. All right, so I'm about to get ready and go to the post office and I'll take you along with me for this adventure. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Come on! Oh, you want me to walk? Yeah, sure, go on. See, for y'all watching, she didn't say that. She just said film me, so. Are you talking to the camera? Talking to, yeah, yeah, I am. It got really cold all of a sudden, and now I have entered auntie mode. You got one cellmate across the hall. You know, lock up when they be like banging on the bars and they're like, let me out. If they let me out, you don't know what I'm gonna do to you. Like, that's what I feel like I'm experiencing right now. Okay, what are we gonna order? What do they know about oxtail? I'm getting tofu. Look at my earrings. They're little mushrooms. We got snapples. Sneeples. Snake people. Foodie has arrived. Foodie has arrived. Whole Foods Market? Or Le Foods Market? <laughs> Julian, what do you think of the new space? Solid. What are you getting? It's a pen. He's getting this pen. Got so much washi tape. Ooh! The strawberry was really cute. Yeah, and now I have more. Yay! So a lot of you saw in the vlog the little tape cutter I had, the little washi tape cutter where you can just peel it and then tear it. I bought it from Yaseka Stationery and it's this Tokyo tape cutter. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to purchase one from a small business. And this has made my workflow so much easier. I did that painting. It's in the little museum right here. <laughs> my favorite. Let's go. Look at Julian's sketchbook. It has my sticker, Lee's stickers, mice, and then Fran. 
Clancy podcast. Sketch book tour soon? I mean, you know, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, it's Tuesday. I had a little bit of coffee. Now I'm a little bit jittery. I wanted to share some things I got yesterday and some stuff that came into the mail. I went to the McNally Jackson gift shop where they sell stationery and pencils. I got these clips and this 6B pencil and this very lovely thin blue ink pen. Then I went to go see Daisy and Neil who run Yoseka Stationery. It's a small Taiwanese-owned stationery shop. I got a lot of stuff from them. They were kind enough to let me inside even though in-store shopping was closed. They were like, you can have some VIP access. I got a ton of washi tape. I love washi tape. This is what I use to package orders because it's paper-based and not plastic. I got this refill for my tape runner. These Pentel sign pens. This is what I use to write the thank you notes. They're a brush tip. I got two of my favorite gel pens. They are multicolored ink, this froggy and flower stamp, and this really cute stationery paper. I love the colors. This is the bag that my order came in. Next up, I have these two books from Silver Sprocket. Annabelle mentioned this book in one of her videos and I was really curious. I'm very excited to read it. I love comics, I love graphic novels, so I always want to study how people lay out their manuscripts. I got a bunch of clay very very necessary. I got some of these organizers from Muji so when I assemble those jars I can separate little paint tubes and inks into here so they're a bit more organized and not just thrown into the drawer. I was very fortunate to purchase an original. This one is by Natalia Cardona. I think they're meant to be the sisters from The Shining. Sorry I'm a fake fan but I really love the illustration and it really caught my eye and I can't wait to frame it. I will always support living artists. Speaking of artists, these earrings that I'm wearing are made by my friend Emma Fesholo. She actually assembled the chain mail, which is so unique and intricate. She has more chain mail pieces on her website. I'll leave a link in the description. But look how lovely everything came packaged. A little personalized tag for me. This was really smart, but she stamped the tissue paper with her logo. This very nice holographic sticker. And she also included this amazing laser cut piece. I absolutely love Emma. We've been friends for about four years and she moved to California, so I'm very sad. She used to live in Brooklyn, so I would be able to see her. I'm really glad that I can support her all the way from the East Coast and if this is something you'd like, you should definitely check out her shop. Just putting in that little plug there, you know, women supporting women, friends supporting friends, artists supporting artists. I decided to put the sticker on the back of my iPad next to Toadie. This is another sticker by her, but she recently changed her Instagram name. I'm actually gonna go and see my doctor right now. I have a B12 shot to take, and then I'm gonna go and assemble those drawers. Think about whether or not I want to assemble that desk today. See you soon. I think it's time. Oh boy. Oh, there's so many parts. To be quite fair, I'm really good at assembling IKEA furniture. Practically all of the IKEA furniture I have in my room, I put together. What are these pieces? I figured it out. Casual case of me. Misreading instructions. Why my family so loud? Hello? Hmm, okay, now we do the other side. Sometimes I think about the fact that I won't live with my family one day and there will be days Julian is not here to help me and I need to figure out how to lift things that are three times my size on my own. I'm only 5'3 and I weigh barely 105 pounds. I wish I could be brolic, but alas, I am built like a cat. It is what it is. Everyone should feel positive about their bodies no matter what the size. I really hope this is symmetrical? Question mark? Girl, they better be symmetrical. This is supposed to click in place. So let's see. Hello? Okay. This is like the smallest piece of furniture. Why does it need so much assembly? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Why is my family so loud? Cool. Which way do we go? So you're telling me? This thing just, just stays? Okay. Oh, I'm supposed to like fold the tabs down. Let me get some pliers. 
<laughs> I realize that you probably, guys probably can't even see any of this, but I'm trying to like fold these tabs down so they lock in place. Ooh, why is it wiggly? I don't like this. Now for the top. From the top. Nice, nice, nice. It's starting to actually look like <laughs> drawers. <gasps> Enemy. Oh, okay, it's done. I feel like I'm just gonna do something and everything's just gonna come apart. Ooh, I'm doing a little bit of a rolly. Nice, nice. Okay, time to. I think it's time to assemble the individual drawers now. Oh no, this is asking me to bend the metal. Bend the metal? How? Oh. Oh, that's so nerve-wracking. What if it snaps? Not too bad. Whoops. I don't get it. Oh. Shh. Bending metal makes me so nervous. Like, come on, I'm not tough. I think that's it. And the great part is... Those Muji organizers fit, they also fit this way, which will help me organize all of my stuff. I don't think I want to assemble my desk today, but I'm going to start cleaning out the drawers. I sent off this design yesterday to Vinyl Disorder. These are going to be the new freebie stickers for the holiday update. So once I get those, I'm going to start switching over from the bat kunis to the little embarrassed reindeer kunis. And I also got this vote illustration turned into a circle sticker, kind of like the I voted sticker. I'm having this available as a sticker and also as a button. to do a Mary Kondo method. So I have some inks here, tape and glue, erasers and refills, batteries and wires, sewing stuff, knitting stuff, blades and pencils, a pile of miscellaneous things. Those are some 420 candles that I've used for two years in a row. My birthday's on 420. Um, let's see, more miscellaneous things staples, pencil cases, and just a bunch of other clutter that I don't know what to do with. I think today is the day I'm going to assemble that new desk because this one has 10 years of damage and paint peeling off the surface. Last night I cleared out both drawers completely and I moved everything to this new drawer right here. Look at how pretty my bedroom looks right now. It's getting cold, so I busted out the cottage core comforter right there. Of course, sadly, my brother was into kiss. Those are my brothers, that's Rory and Sean. Some friends, Holly, Kaya, Betty. <laughs> this is when the emo and seeing kids was a huge thing, and um, Freddie Mercury was the love of my life. That's an emo boy. <laughs> there we go. Now that my printer is done being loud, I can show you guys a little bit of the mock-up. So the ornaments are going to be blue with embroidered eyes, a pink bow, and a little bell right here. And there's going to be a few stars on the belly of the cat. And I think the twine needs to be moved up more towards the neck instead of the middle because the bell will kind of weigh down this way. If I have the ornament hanging from here, it'll be more balanced like this instead of downward. Currently just waiting on Julian to get here so we can move this desk out together and assemble the new one. In the meantime, I made some new prints. These were both prompts from the Peachtober challenge and I made them in my printer at home. Right now I'm going to sign these babies and start clearing out the 
top of my desk. Time for a new desk. Time to assemble the new desk. <laughs> Can you get these guys? Yo, wait, this is taller than I am? Oh my god. That's nice, that's it. Wait, this is so cool. That's your height. This is your level. This is this is my height though. It's like a, it's like a bar for me. This is lit. Can you? Oh. Ready? New desk. New desk. Sometimes when you manifest in your desires, they come your way. Flexispot reached out to me and kindly sent me one of their latest desks. This is the Vici EC9 model. It is smooth, it is beautiful, and it took me less than 15 minutes to put together. Literally all I had to do was attach the legs, the feet with some screws and connect some wires. The best part is I can still do this. And not only that, it is height adjustable with the push of a button. This desk has a 110 pound weight capacity, which I luckily fall under. The height adjustment is great because I can switch in between sitting and standing. As you know, I run a small business, so there's a lot of order packing involved. By having the desk be level when I stand, it saves my back from hunching over as I fulfill orders. Compared to many of the electric desks that I've seen on the market, this one is pretty affordable. Something like this can cost an upwards of $500, but this particular desk is just under $300. You know your girl would not leave you hanging because they sent me a referral link for you guys to use for $15 off of their desks. Or from November 18th to November 26th, you can save $50 by using the code PBF50. So if you're looking to get a nice upgrade on your workspace, I highly recommend one of these. I have all the links in the description where you can get your own desk. Thanks again to FlexiSpot for this super cool desk. I hope I get to spend many years creating on this one. Some of you were asking on my Instagram what else I got from Ikea. Other than the drawers, which took me longer to assemble than the desk, I got just a few things to make my workspace a little bit tidier. It's not really much. I, I really like having things that are not meant for that particular use. So these are napkin holders. 
but I really love the design and I used it to have my sketchbook and my planner stay upright. There was also another one in this lilac color. Then I got these two pride bags. I'm really glad that Ikea decided to keep these year-round. These are going to be great for when I have to bring orders to the post office. Now I'm wondering, do I give you guys a little informal workspace tour? Let's do it. So you guys have probably seen this part of my workspace. I have a wall filled with artwork. Over here I have some drawers for Muji. It has colored pencils, washi tapes, <laughs> miscellaneous things in this one, and some stamps and my old sketchbooks and journals. I have the napkin holders that I just showed you guys, a snake plant, this side of my shelf that has art and some to-do lists, this printable calendar by Cheyenne Barton. This is my iPad Pro and I put it on a stand so it's easier for me to work. This is a record holder. I have some of my vinyls back here. This is the long point sharpener. Some of you have asked how I get my pencils sharp like this. It's a special long point sharpener. I have an assortment of pens, pencils, brushes. This organizer is from Muji. This is a tea tin. This was a broken mason jar, so I used it to store my brushes instead. This is my desk light. It's called an alt light, and personally, I don't like using artificial light, but this is the closest that comes to natural daylight. I have two plants right here. This is a little gnome cat that lives in my plant. I have a cutting mat right here to protect the surface from getting damaged. Some photos and artwork from my friends. Then over here, I have the new drawers I got from Ikea. This area needs to be fixed up a little bit because I'm not sure what I want to put on top of this. This Star Wars lunch tin holds all of my acrylic markers. These are some sanitizing wipes, my pencil case. As for the drawers, let's actually start with the bottom. I have paint palettes, stamps, stationery, and memo pads, some sticky notes and other memo pads. There's some miscellaneous stuff in the back. Embroidery things, I think. Glue runners, tape, staplers, blades, stamps, stamp ink, calligraphy and drawing inks. All of the vinyl stickers in my store, some business cards, pen and eraser refills, some sticky notes, a bunch of Nichiban artist tape, jewelry findings, pencils in that wooden box, clips, rubber bands, twine, and some treats for when Kuni wants to come bother me when I'm working. I like that this is magnetic, so I can put magnets here instead of feeling scared to put stickers on. I don't have much space in my room, so underneath my desk is my printer and my turntable. On the right side of my desk, I have a wall of memories, my old glasses before I had laser eye surgery, photos of my family, some gifts from friends and birthday cards, some cleaning supplies from Muji, recycling bin right there, large sheets of paper, and my portfolio. On the left of my desk is the messier end of things. I have my plants, my speaker, humidifier, more plants, a bunch of video games behind that, magazines. This is where I store most of my prints, a bunch of books, more books and loose papers, more stock, plants, just a bunch of very scattered organized things, air purifier, this woven basket filled with paper pads, more plants, cups filled with more markers and supplies, and on the ground I have my paper cutter, my guillotine, and a bunch of boxes filled with more stock. Half of my room is strictly divided into studio space, and the other half is my living space. So I have a bunch of books on that shelf, personal belongings, makeup. I don't have a closet, but I do have a wardrobe, so that does take up a bulk of the space. This is my bed, <laughs> my tripod where I film, the lovely shelf above my bed, and then we sort of come full circle with my nightstand and back to my workspace. I really hope that was interesting. I always like looking at other people's workspaces, and sometimes I feel a little weird when I tell people that my studio is also in my bedroom. 
because it feels less professional. But at the same time, you know, this is my current situation right now. And I hope very soon I have the financial independence to move out and have a separate studio space or to have a studio that's outside of my apartment. Everything that you're seeing here is an accumulation of years and years of materials and supplies and furniture throughout my life. So none of this happened overnight. I also hope this gives you some kind of inspiration to organize your current workspace as well. My order from the Digital Dream Market is here. I kind of forgot about it, but I got some clay pins and clay earrings and this risograph zine by Olivia Fields, who is one of my friends. I'm really excited. You know when you get mail and it hasn't arrived in a while and you forget about it? <laughs> yeah, so this is this is kind of that situation. Oh, this is so cute. This is so adorable. I'm always scared of handmade pins because what if it pops off of my bag or wherever I put it? Like I've lost so many enamel pins that I really, really love. But look how cute that is. Oh my goodness. Ooh. <gasps> yes! Look how freaking cute these earrings are. I think they're they're little lotus lotus flowers. And the second I saw them, I was like, they need to be mine. And now they're mine. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta treat yourself. I made it a habit that if I'm going to get new stuff, it'll be from independent artists rather than big corporations. Oh, I'm so excited about this zine. I love zines. And I love Risograph. And I love Olivia Fields' illustrations. So it's a bunch of Rizzo shoes. So beautiful. Uh, the fun part about it is that it folds out. So it's actually one sheet of paper that's cut and then folded. So cool. This is, this is why I love zines. And this is also why I love Risograph. Don't forget to shop small this holiday season. Oh. <laughs> Want to leave? Wiggly Queenie? Bye bye. This is really random, but I'm having some dinner while watching Tink's vlogs. Right now I'm eating dalpak, which is uh, essentially rice and lentil soup. And it's a very traditional staple in Bangladeshi cuisine. It's just moments like this where I'm just very grateful for my mother's cooking and for the fact that I am <laughs> essentially engaged in my culture, in my language. I also speak Bengali fluently with my family. I also usually eat with my hands at the dinner table, but since I'm eating on my desk, I'm eating with a spoon. I don't, I don't know what came over me, but I just felt the need to share that little bit and just be very grateful for moments like this as I live with my family because when I move out, I'm definitely going to have to learn all of these recipes because there's so many types of dal. I feel like I'm thinking a little bit into the future, but right now I feel really good and I feel really positive. I think the epiphany I had is that when I was younger, I would bring my traditional food to school for lunch and people would make fun of it because it was different or not American. And I felt very ashamed to basically take comfort food from my home that is very delicious to me and bring it to school because I would just be embarrassed. Right now, we live in a much more embracing society. Asian food, Indian food, Bengali food is very much loved by most people. You know, I just thought about the fact that I got ridiculed for this when I was younger. Adult me being able to love that part of myself. I feel very much cozy right now. I think that's what it is. Cozy and grateful. See you later. <laughs> I was casually filming on my nicer camera, which is a Canon M50, and then I saw the battery flashing. So now we're filming on my phone. Um, hi, what's up? It's November 20th today. I'm currently working on sketching out some holiday printables. I just closed up the silkscreen shirt pre-orders, and I'm temporarily closing my shop starting tomorrow so that I can prepare for the holiday update. I just want to make sure that the holiday update releases within the first week of December so that people are able to get their things before around Christmas time. Last night I cut up a huge stack of felt for these adorable little Kuni ornaments and Julian and I were watching the Fresh Prince reunion which made both of us cry um, and while I was doing that I 
tied up all of the little bows uh, out of ribbon for those ornaments just to just to like you know make the work go by a little bit faster for when I assemble them because the eyes are embroidered and then I have to stitch on the bow and the bell and then stitch around it it's just a lot of steps let me show you guys what these printables are looking like I was thinking about gift tag shapes and I just decided to go with the simple one so it's easier for people to cut and then having tiny tiny little illustrations on every single tag and for this Someone recently got my artwork tattooed, which is really cool. She obviously asked for permission, which is essential when you would like to use artwork that doesn't belong to you. I told them that it would be nice if they could leave a tip from anywhere around 10 to $30 in my Kofi, which would cover basically the, the usage of the art. I was thinking of offering tattoo tickets on my shop. That way people can just select the amount they'd like to leave. And then there's just like some terms and conditions that come with getting my work tattooed. I actually booked an appointment myself to get a tattoo next month. I'll leave it a little bit of a secret. So we get to experience that together. Today is the second session where I get to talk to some teenagers alongside with the Queen's Museum. Julian has also been joining me in those talks. So it's really lovely to talk to people who are younger than me who want to pursue art. Oh, I'm watching one of Cheyenne's vlogs and she has a studio now. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of her. It's so weird because she started following me when I barely had any followers. I'm like so grateful that I'm just able to have internet friends and conversations with other artists. She's like super cool. I remember I popped into her stream and she was just like, hey, Maria, I miss you. And she's like, wait, but we've never met. But I understood exactly what she meant. It's just so nice seeing people that you've you know, watched on the internet grow and actually being friends with these particular artists, which is so valuable to me. I'm super excited to see how she utilizes the studio space and it just makes me think about the day that I'm able to have my own studio space. First of all, the day that I move out and live on my own or live with my partner and to kind of branch out and grow because right now I, I'm a little constricted with space. So to see other people grow, it gives me hope that, you know, it's something that I can do in the future as well, if time and money allows. Shannon, if you're watching this, I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. You are so amazing. I have nothing but love and positivity for you and everything that will unfold with accommodating yourself to that space. All right, I think I'm going to narrow down uh, what the printables are going to be, because right now I'm looking at gift tags, gift cards, postcards, maybe? And think about if I'm going to maybe get some red envelopes for the physical cards. It's very exciting. I also suck at laying out digital stuff, so we'll see how well that goes. So I just finished speaking with some of the teens from the Queen's Teens program, and right before that I put together the holiday gift tag PDF draft of what it'll look like and I think I'm gonna have six tags with six different designs. I just ordered a bunch of red envelopes and now I'm going to put together the actual artwork that'll be the printables. I'm waiting on a lot of stuff. I'm hoping that everything arrives before December. <sighs> I'm gonna try editing while I do this. I have so many orders to pack. See you in the next clip. Hello, good morning, it's Saturday. I finished up the gift tags last night. I printed them out. The colors are looking a little wonky. They're very unsaturated. Um, I have an inkjet printer, so the color should be vibrant. So it's probably the way that I set up the colors in the file because I was working in CMYK. And I really like this one. Look at this, it's a pink tree. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of revisions for these gift tags. That will be one of the printables in the shop. I'm not sure if I'll do a physical version of it. What else? Oh. Uh, Julian made reservations to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They have a specific capacity of people they can allow in, obviously wearing masks, and I haven't been to a museum since California. That'll be a nice trip. I know that there's a spike in COVID cases, so this is going to be like the last outing that I do because obviously it's just in everyone's best interest to stay at home. I will take you guys with me on this little museum date and oh! <laughs> I got new sneakers. Julian got me new sneakers. Um, <laughs> they're on my feet. Hold on. They look like this. <laughs> These are my shoes. These are my new shoes. I love the colorways. Um, there's like a cool lime green and like a lilac V right here. Uh, I think they're 
pronounce Veja? Veja? Anyways, I usually don't like to buy things that are new because fast fashion and I don't want to add to newer production, but Madewell had this collaboration. I really like the colorways. And if you want to look at what my uh, older shoes look like, these are my Nike Air Force Ones. They're very crusty, yellowed. I've had these for over five years. Uh, they got lots of love. I'm still not throwing them away because they're not broken. They're just musty. <laughs> Yeah, so that was really nice. I'm glad that this size fits. I'm gonna wear these on our little date today. Hopefully that'll help break them in. The weather is really great. I'm glad it's not nasty outside or anything. All right, let's go on this adventure. Oh, I didn't know you were recording me. <laughs> Hi, we're at the Met. We're looking at Egypt right now, and then we finna go to, um, I don't know what's after that, actually, <laughs> on this side. The European stuff is on the other side. Look at these teeny tiny, teeny tiny pots. They're Kuni sized pots. Julian, what do you think they store in here? Like secrets? Yeah, like, I don't have anything clever to say, <laughs> but. I don't know, like maybe like little like probably perfumes and like incenses, right? Like mm. stuff that you don't have to have a lot of. Or makeup. Yeah. Return the slab, post up my curves. Has the DNA of this. Mm, I really like this one. Look at the beautiful Native American weaving. These are hooks. Look at how beautiful those moccasins are. We found a very big guni boy. I have found the artwork of my people. I have found sacred frog. You know, just like after 10 test prints, I finally got the results I needed. The header was too big and was getting cut off. And then the colors were printing way too light and faded. And then some things were getting lost. Actually, this is the one that I liked, but some things were printing way too dark, way too light. The reds were incredibly dull in the first print. And I finally have this one, which is the colors that I like. I printed these on an inkjet printer, so the colors are more vibrant. Let's go into the daylight. I think I'll leave it as this. These gift tags are, I think, two inches by three inches, roughly that size. And I printed these on some paper I got from Michaels. It's like light cardstock. And I don't know if I'm going to have physical ones in the store because these are kind of a pain in the ass to cut individually myself. But if you're going to like, you know, print a single sheet, it's not that much work. So I think what I'm going to do with the test prints is I will cut these and include one or two in the orders as just a little extra freebie. So I have this little twine attached. There's a little heart 
right here on the printable and that's where you can use a hole punter to punch them. There's nothing on the back, you can write a message on the back, but the to and from, you can write the name right here and right here. Because I know it's usually adjacent, but I wanted the image to be large, so the space to write the names are right under it instead of right next to it. Very satisfied with these. I'm going to work on cards next, and then I have a lot of ornaments to embroider and stitch up, and Julian is coming in a bit. I just got a huge bulk of shirts that I ordered, and we're going to silk screen those together. I'm watching Tiffany's art studio makeover and I'm in the live chat and we have these same desk and drawers which I thought was really cool. Can we please make the pom-pom garland a trend in the studio? Pom-pom garland is a must for serotonin in the studio. You ready? Mm -hmm. Right now? Yeah. Can you still do it like that? I guess. Oh, this is more shirts. This is gonna hurt my thumbs. I might need to take a break in the middle. Crisp, lovely first print. I think I'm gonna do four passes on these. Can you hold the edges of the shirt? Thank you. All of the shirt pre-orders, there's so many you come from what this squirrel just jumped onto my air conditioner girl I live on the third floor where are you coming from guess what arrived guess what arrived I got my custom fabric look at it it's so cute look at it look at it, look at it, look at it. So cute! This was from Spoonflower. This is the standard cotton fabric that they have. I bought two yards, it was pretty expensive. But I'm going to wash the fabric right now just to do a wash test so they don't shrink whenever I make something. But I'm gonna make some face masks and I'm gonna make some cat toys. I'm really, really excited. Super excited, this came out perfect. It is perfect, the scale is perfect. The colors are perfect, it's so cute. This is, this is the dream. <laughs> Hi. I constantly wear this same shirt, but I promise I have other clothes. Anyways, 
I wanted to pop in and talk about eco-friendliness because Lee just uploaded another video about eco-friendly packaging and I have always been inspired by Lee's push to make sure that small businesses have the resources and the encouragement to package their products plastic-free as much as possible to have items that are either recycled or recyclable. And you might have seen in her video these labels that I made from my zero waste shipping labels. I use my thermal printer, so there's no ink. I use a Rolo thermal printer and I will print six of these per four by six sheet. I will reuse any existing mailers I already have because I feel like it doesn't matter if the outside looks a little bit ugly. It's what matters on the inside and also the products. I put this sticker on any order that has reused packaging. And then I also have these thank you cards from Fireball Printing and on the back there's a note and instructions on what to do with your mailers and uh, what the compostable sleeves for prints look like. I'm trying to phase out compostable plastic because it is still a bioplastic Allegedly, the ones that I use are at home compostable because they're made out of cellulose versus PLA, which just breaks down into microplastics. It never truly actually returns to the earth, which is something to consider. And I just ordered the biggest size of glassine bags from Paper Mart, and glassine is slick, recyclable paper. It's semi-translucent. It kind of looks like those par parchment paper bags you get at a pastry shop. The problem is they don't come in really, really large sizes, and I have 11 by 17 prints in my shop, so I think I'm going to have to phase out the larger prints so that I can keep ordering just glassine bags to package my prints. They're not waterproof, but they're water resistant, which is good enough for me. I've only ever had one print survive through a thunderstorm because I do have the compostable plastic sleeve on the prints. Just looking at all the compostable plastic that I do use, it's, it just doesn't feel right. I'm trying my best to switch over my shop to be as plastic free as possible. Obviously, I will still reuse bubble wrap. I will still reuse poly mailers, so it'll come with that sticker but I want to make sure that, you know, when something is out of my hands, that people understand how to dispose or recycle of things properly, because what happens is most of the time it just ends up in a landfill and I don't want that to happen, you know? So those craft mailers that I use, they can be reused over and over and over again until they're literally falling apart. Same thing with bubble mailers, because eventually it, it, it gets thrown away. It gets thrown away and I want to make sure that people are either reusing them, reusing them and recycling them, and that's very important to me because I'm someone who is vegan, someone who is trying to live a low waste lifestyle as much as possible. So I want those things to translate into my small business as well. Thank you for listening on this little bit. I really hope I can encourage other small artists to have more eco-friendly alternatives. Remember that sustainability is more so the responsibility of larger corporations that create massive amounts of waste. It's really about our individual choices that create that push. I'm really, really passionate about this and I hope that I can inspire other people to prevent them from purchasing plastic, which I know is cheaper, but if it matters to you, if you care about your customers, having an eco-friendly approach is just the better decision to make. But obviously make decisions that are within your control. Thanks for listening in on this little section right here. I just went and pre-washed my fabric. I'm really excited to let it dry and I can't wait to make the face masks. I'm gonna make ones that are similar to this one. So it, it hugs your chin and covers your nose and it's very tight on the face. This has a cotton filter pocket. That fabric is 100% cotton. I believe it is sourced in the United States and I will be sewing them myself on my sewing machine. That'll be super duper exciting. This is the fabric post wash and I've ironed it and rolled it out onto this roll of canvas that I've had. And I also got some pins in the mail. I got these vote pins pressed. It's from a seller on Etsy and I made sure the design said vote and not I voted so we can have that bit of inclusivity in case you're either not of age to vote or you're ineligible you can still encourage people to vote. So I did this as a pin and also as a vinyl sticker which has yet to arrive but these will be part of the shop update. I know the election is over but I think voting is still important. There will be many votes in the future that you know all of us should participate in and there, go out there and exercise your rights. Do you like it? Did you remember to vote this election? Yes? No? I'll take that as a yes. Oh! <laughs> Oh.
I have the fabric pieces laid out here. So this will be the outer shell and this will be the inner cotton for the filter pocket. And I didn't use any specific pattern. I actually followed a guide on YouTube on how to make a pattern from the measurements of your own face. And this seems to fit a lot of people, but I might have a size up from this as well if you have a wider face. And instead of having elastics, I actually went ahead and got these adjustable ones, which I think will save time and will be way easier for people rather than having to tie it. I'm gonna start doing a mock-up of this one. This fabric is a little weird. This is actually muslin cotton fabric. So this is what I use for embroidery, but I'm just making a mock-up one for myself. I'm gonna go and find some better cotton fabric. starting to take a little bit of the shape. I don't have a serger, which is used to finish the hems of clothing, but I do have a zigzag stitch, so I'm gonna use that to finish the raw edges. That way the fabric doesn't fray. Ooh, time to turn it inside out. This is my favorite part of whenever I'm sewing things. Turning the piece inside out, because you stare at it for so long looking at the wrong sides. Ooh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, so nice. I'm gonna now stitch around the perimeter so it lays flat and then finish off the edges right here where it'll hold the elastic. And then it's pretty much done from here. Nothing to see here, just a casual bowl of vegan mac and cheese at 11.42 p.m. The scrap felt that you see, I actually reuse that to stuff the ornaments. And then right now I'm just gluing on these little iridescent stars with some fabric glue. Size to take us, Brussels sprout. Oh. Brussels sprout tree. <laughs> Brussels sprout. Brussels. Brussels sprout. Brussels sprout. 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 Yes. <laughs> Super duper fast haul for today. Some things aren't related, some things that aren't related. Like this Tofurky log, I don't eat meat. So we are doing Thanksgiving this year, just my family and Julian, because need I explain the situation of the pandemic? Got a holiday log, got my Chobani oat milk. I went to a fabric store in Queens named Liz Discount Fabrics. My family has been friends with their owners for the longest time. That's the only place where I get bulk fabric and I got some 100% cotton fabric for the lining for the face masks. And definitely recommend that store if you want to get some fabrics and want to support a small business because they are a small business. Then I got this big boy box. This was on sale at Michael's. I kind of do but don't like the Christmas print, but this was big enough to store prints that I get from Moo because I don't have enough space to store them flat, so I'm gonna store them 
like you would photos in a box. Got these really cool wooden flower things. I'm gonna gesso them and paint on them. Then I got these blank cards and envelopes. This is what I will be printing on to make the physical holiday cards, some fabric glue, and this box to store embroidery floss. And that's it. Was this interesting? Doesn't matter. Whatever. See ya. Hi, we're uncomfortably close, but look at my eye makeup. <laughs> you know when cats be like, <laughs> is that for me? Hi, welcome back. I thought I would share some of the items that will be part of the holiday shop update. I don't have an official date announced yet because I'm still working on producing more stock, but I'm hoping it'll be within the first few days of December or maybe even a little bit earlier, but I'll make an official announcement on Instagram and also on here so nobody misses out. Let's start off with my favorite. I made this little Leaping Kuni felt ornament. He has a little bell and a bow and embroidered eyes and these little glitter stars on him. Next up, we have a cotton face mask. This one was just a test version that I made for my mother. The loops on the ones that I'll be selling will be adjustable versus just elastic that might loosen up over time. They are 100% cotton outer and inner lining and the inside has a little pocket to put in maybe some paper towels or extra padding as a filter. Please remember that masks are a preventative measure for avoiding COVID transmission just like you would wear a seatbelt when you're driving a car. By wearing one, you're showing that you care about the well-being of not only yourself, but other people. Wearing is caring. Out of the same fabric, I have these little catnip toys. They're in the shape of a heart, and I'm only making a few of these because I'm just using the excess scrap fabric from the face masks. Next up, I have this button. It says vote on it, and it's a pin style badge button. There will also be a two inch vinyl sticker version of this. There will be several printables in the shop, including these gift tags. There are six different designs. I won't have these physically in the shop though, but it will be available as a printable PDF document. And with the printable documents, you can print as many as you want to your heart's content, and they are for personal use. I also have some holiday card printables, but I will have a physical version as well in the shop. I have three different designs. This happy holiday one with a kuni stuck in a tree. These singing frogs that say falala and then one that says season's greetings. Every physical card will also come with a ruby red envelope. Lastly, I have four new prints coming to the shop. This Luna Moth print, some feral friends, this lovely sword lady, and my Sailor Moon redraw. And this time I have a new design for the freebie sticker. So it is a crying reindeer kuni. It is a vinyl sticker and I just got the shipping notification last night. I don't have it physically with me, but I'll have an image of what it looks like here. I got about 500 and I'm very excited to include one with each order. Please remember to shop small this holiday season. It is so much more rewarding to buy from an independent creator or an artist rather than a big corporation. As you may know, my student loan repayment begins in December. So whenever you buy from the shop, you're financially supporting my freelance work and my ability to create new cool items. If you are feeling generous, I have a Kofi where you can leave a tip for as little as the price of a coffee. Once the holiday update is live, I will have my shop open for a week so that I can fulfill orders in time for Christmas. I am just one person, so it does take a bit of time to pack every single order with love and care. Also, please note that there will be a holiday rush, especially as people will send gifts versus physically seeing each other this year. So with USPS, there may be a bit of delays and I'm trying my best to make things as early as possible so people will get them in time. For international orders, it may take a little bit longer, especially as some countries have already entered the second lockdown. Definitely mark your calendars because after this holiday update, the next time my shop will reopen is spring of next year. Thanks again if you made it this far into the vlog. Thanksgiving is either today, depending on when you're watching this, but please, please, please don't be that person that accidentally gives your entire family COVID, okay? Staying at home is very much encouraged. I hope you guys are staying safe and well. I know as the days get shorter, a lot of people are having their seasonal depression coming back. I hope this vlog brings a little bit of light to your day. I also hope you guys are just as excited for the holiday update as I am. If you haven't already, leave a like and feel free to hit that subscribe button. Ooh, ooh, fun idea. Okay, if you made it this far into the video, leave a comment with one, 
what your favorite Thanksgiving slash holiday dish is, and two, what you're most excited for for this holiday update. I'm gonna have a little bit of fun reading the comments this time. I am wishing you all love, good vibes, and positivity. Thanks again for sticking around, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!